You're listening to the Deloitte Business Chemistry Confessions podcast series. Hello, I'm your host, Kim Christfort, National Managing Director of the Deloitte Greenhouses. And I'm Suzanne Vickberg, also known as Dr. Suze, Lead Researcher for Business Chemistry. Welcome to this week's episode of Deloitte Business Chemistry Confessions. You're about to go on a journey of true workplace stories of success and failure that all came down to one thing, business chemistry. Research suggests we make better decisions in diverse groups than in homogenous ones, but we feel less confident in those decisions. Why? In today's episode, we hear about a newly appointed CEO and her experience of having a responsibility seemingly pulled from her grasp by a large and cumbersome board. Instead of the CEO and board benefiting from their different perspectives, we see an example of how difference can be straight up difficult. We've seen this story before, the tug of war. The ensuing struggle leads to conflict, blatant mistrust, and puts many major initiatives in serious jeopardy. Here to tell us about it is Jerry Ann, who witnessed the mayhem personally. I've known the CEO for several years. One of her great talents is bringing great thinkers together. She's charismatic, inspirational. She's really good at making people feel heard, included in decision making. You know, the kind of person that makes you feel like it was your idea. And I also know the board very well. It it was large, 21 people and most of them were high-level industry executives and academics. They're results-driven, objective, and deadline-oriented. And they came mostly from the technology and science sectors, so they're big thinkers, innovators. Well, we already have an interesting setup here because you hear about a CEO who, in many ways, is sort of the dream CEO, charismatic and inspirational and brings people along on the journey. And then you hear about the board who is very different, very academic, very goal-oriented, very get-to-the-point. I'm, I'm surprised there'd be any trouble at all with this scenario. <laughs> right. And I think that, you know, when you hear about her and the way that she brings people together, I love the statement that Jerry ann made that she makes it think, you think that it was your idea. She sounds to me like an integrator. Uh, Maybe a teamer, which is really an extroverted type of integrator, somebody who's out there kind of working the team and getting everyone on the same page and making people like it. Right. And then you've got the board that sounds much more like the driver type, possibly even the scientist version of driver, because you've got that sort of rigor, that goal orientation, the potential uh, logic that's necessary behind an academic career. And uh, that is interesting because, of course, as, as we've talked about before, integrators and drivers are opposite types. Exactly. And particularly these very goal-focused sort of experts in their fields might be less likely to understand the importance of an inclusive leadership style. And I think that we're going to hear that come out in the difficulties that this exec has with the board. And to make matters worse, there was conflict and distress between the executives and the board, particularly between the lead executive and the board chairs. Executives were rejecting the recommendations and overtures of the board, and no one on the board really understood why. And the board wasn't satisfied with the level of detail in the executive's reports either. It just got ugly. Frustration grew on both ends about how things were being communicated and received. And to add to it, there were no clear boundaries on who owned what on projects. On one hand, the executives and administration believed they owned the work and the board should just approve it. The board, on the other hand, leaned in on their fiduciary responsibility to oversee these things. So the CEO and the board, we've said, sound like opposite types. That doesn't necessarily need to lead, need to, lead to conflict. We've talked about before how these can be complementary, but clearly in this case, they were not. They were not able to relate to one another at all. Yeah, and I, I can't help but think that Maybe some direct conversation about that could have helped. It doesn't sound like they talked about it. For example, uh, Jerry Ann says that 
you know, the the CEO was rejecting the board's recommendations, but they didn't understand why. Um, and so it sounds like there's, in addition to a difference in working style, there's a communication breakdown where they're not talking about what the struggles are. They're just struggling. There's a bigger issue here. Talking about business chemistry might might help them or talking about different styles and different expectations might help them. But for a team to be successful, you also need a good foundation and some of the basics. One of the basics that you require on pretty much any team is clear roles and boundaries. And so they would need to get that in order, I think, in order for talking about their work styles to to be really effective. The interpersonal conflicts were indicators that some sort of mediation needed to occur. It was headed towards a he said, she said, and it wasn't funny. The future of our organization depended on the health of the relationships when we were working together in these very big things. One of those big things was building a new facility. It was a big project. Certain board members were brought onto the board specifically because of their ability to ideate, design, build, and market these structures to stakeholders. And they were seen as critical to the follow through on using the facility as it was conceived. The board members with these backgrounds were ready to move forward. The executive, however, thought she should lead that process. So it slowed the process of getting things done. The executive wanted to be part of everything. It's interesting that she says that the executive wanted to be part of everything. That doesn't surprise me given that she's an integrator because I think she wanted to make sure she wasn't missing the context and missing details that would be important to understand how to get them to their long-term impact. And she probably felt personally responsible as the leader, as the CEO, and, and took that responsibility to heart, to use an integrator word, and felt that she couldn't just delegate it to somebody else. Right. And but I think what we're seeing here is is a culture clash. And we talked in one of our other podcasts, the secret weapons one about how an organization or a team can have a personality or a culture. And here we've got sort of an academic culture clashing with the culture of the organization. In academia, people are very used to being the expert and moving ahead as the expert. They might collaborate with other experts, but they're not likely to do so much collaboration with people who don't have expertise in whatever area they're working in. Here in this organization, some people are experts. They talk about how Certain board members were brought in for their expertise in particular areas. So they're thinking, well, I'm the expert. I'm going to move ahead here. But in this organizational culture that's very inclusive, they need to bring the non-experts along with them. And that's what they're not doing. And the style is exacerbating that tendency to want to be an expert because it's the shortest path from A to B to be the expert and to apply your expertise. When the executive gets involved, it's it's seen as an inefficient pathway to goals, which for a driver is incredibly frustrating. It came to a head when a sudden change in staffing on the executive side occurred. A key senior leader, crucial to funding and marketing, left. It created a huge gaping hole for the project to be completed. The board scrambled to find an interim replacement until a permanent one could be found, but the executive resisted the board's recommendation, feeling that it was an intrusion again into her work. It was territorialism at its worst. What's striking to me about this is the clear insecurity that she seems to be feeling. And I'm I'm wondering if it has something to do with being not only an integrator, but a female leader. Because this this need to sort of be seen as the authority figure and this perception that that's the that that's needed for her to essentially be recognized and appreciated um, could be driving some of this this behavior. And you know we know that both men and women are integrators, but but there are, there are on average more women who are integrators. Yeah, that could definitely be happening, and I think that. The way that they're interacting with each other, whether the conflicts have to do with business chemistry style, unclear roles, gender, or whatever else is happening, the way they are interacting with each other isn't working. And 
because drivers tend to be so goal focused, you know, if we could get them to focus on the fact that the way we're doing things now isn't working, we're not reaching our goal. So you may need to change the way that you interact with other people because drivers aren't always focused there. They're not focused on the people side of it. So they're just like, my goal is not being met. In this case, I'd want to say, well, your goal is not being met because of a person issue, not an individual person, but a, a conflict of people. They need to focus there. It might not be natural for them, uh, but connecting, like the reaching the goal to how people interact with each other might get them to a place where they're willing to do the hard work that it takes to figure out how do we make a team work together with people who are different. She might also benefit from a different approach where she actually talks to the individual board members one-on-one. So rather than dealing with them as this this body of homogeneity who all agree with one another and all all have this expert goal-oriented perspective, if she has conversations individually, she'll probably be more comfortable sharing her viewpoints Integrators do not like confrontation, so saying something that's unpopular in front of the entire board might be awkward for her. So instead, have those smaller conversations, bring it up in a safer setting, and that way maybe they can get the dialogue rolling in advance so that by the time they're actually in a formal setting, it's an easier conversation. The confession is in. The tug of war is an example of how the science of business chemistry can improve the art of relationships. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Find it on Deloitte.com or at iTunes and Stitcher. Business chemistry can help you understand your own work style and how it's similar to or different from others. This understanding lets you flex your style to better accommodate people's unique needs and leverage their strengths. Business chemistry helps improve working relationships and build stronger teams. You can learn more at our website, Deloitte.com.